What's so up my dudes Valk here and today I'm going to be talking about Genshin versus Star Rail because I have seen so much comparison in the past week with Genshin basically getting Fontaine. I've seen so many people coming out against Genshin, for Genshin, against Star Rail, for Star Rail because I've learned that most people who play one game or the other don't really play both. They either have their favorite one and they stick to it. That's not most. I'm sure some of you are going to be like, but Val, I play both and I like both. Good for you. Keep doing it. Keep playing both. Keep enjoying both. Do whatever makes you happy. You know, you do you, boo-boo. But that's not the case for most. I've realized most people are either one way or the other. So I want to kind of talk about what makes each game itself, like what makes each game fundamentally good, because I do believe both games are good. So if you're here for me to bash on Star Rail or bash on Genshin or bash on anything, uh, you're at the wrong spot. I'm not going to be doing that. I'm just going to be doing my little auto runs with, while I sit here and talk about this. Um, but basically, what makes Genshin good? What makes Genshin unique? What makes Genshin its own thing? And I want to talk about the target demographic of each game and how that differs for each one and how it's not really right to compare the games because they really can. Like stylistically, does, artistically, they are very similar. They both anime games, they have very similar engines that they run on each other. Pretty sure it runs on the exact same engine as both of them. Uh, and they both look the same. But, whenever it comes down to actual gameplay and the actual core gameplay loop of each game, they couldn't be more different. So, I want to talk about that kind of today. So, let's first get into Genshin. What makes Genshin good? What makes Genshin great in my opinion? Um... I th what I think Genshin is, I think Genshin is an exploration-based social game. Yeah, that's right, social. I know a lot of you don't use co-op, but there's a lot of people who really do. Co-op's actually a very big feature in Genshin. I think it's an exploration-based social game that's much more on the casual side. That is uh, for a lot of people who basically just want to hang out, just kind of explore beautiful scenic vistas, listen to good music, pay attention to some pretty good story. The story has moments where it's pretty good. Um, but there's a lot of dialogue in it. Like, for a good example, Star Rail's new quest, I believe it took me like an hour to do. And then from what I'm hearing, Fontaine's main quest line took about seven. So it's a little bit of a difference, a little small amount of difference. There's a lot of fluff, there's a lot of dialogue. And that's what the game's there for. That's its target demographic. It's people who want to explore a lot, people who really are, get really invested in their characters where they can sit there and listen to the dialogue about them for hours on end are people who are just really into hanging out with their friends and having a good a cool little place to go around and explore flying chess with your friends in and you can fight new enemies and stuff like that that's basically what Genshin's all about in my opinion now I could be wrong if I'm wrong about something correct me in the comments because that's kind of what I get from it that's a gist from it so comparing something like Genshin to where each area in the map has up to like I think there was like 400 st chests in Mondstadt if I remember right I could be wrong but I think there's like 400 uh, Star Rail has like 10 per map like 10 chests per map if that 15 and I love that like I'm gonna be real the most tedious part of Genshin I found one of the parts that drove me out was actually trying to find all the chests because I'm very much so a completionist I like to try to do everything on a map to get that 100%. Um, I was doing it for a long time, up until Inazuma, until I just simply got tired of it because there's so many chests in every area. And I realized that that game, I'm not that game's target demographic because I don't really care so much for the exploration as much as I cared for the actual achievement of having that 100%. Uh, I'm not really a big fan of exploration, it's just not me. So, what Star Rail's main focus on is actually, it's more so on a much more linear game style. It's much more rails-on story, like you are just going to watch the story happen. There's not a whole lot of like skippable dialogue, there's not a whole lot of fighting even because you can just run past the enemies and speed the story up greatly. Um, there's a whole bunch of just watching the story go down and because of the auto button, you can see I'm literally just watching gameplay itself right now. So, that's not to say that this is a casual game. This is actually a much more hardcore game than Genshin is because this game is more about like really trying to optimize your builds and optimize your teams and trying to push through like there's some events that come out that are genuinely really hard to actually complete and if you say they're not hard then that means you have a pretty good built account. Good for you. Uh, but for most people, MOC, stuff like MOC, stuff like the events are hard. Like it's just how it is. They, they are very hard to actually beat. Now, there's certain characters that come out like Kafka that kind of make stuff like that a joke, but 
as we get more really strong characters like Kafka. I'm sure they'll ramp up the difficulty stuff. Uh, but as we get more strong characters like Kafka, I can see stuff like that becoming easier and easier. But I digress. Uh, right now, the game is hard. It's a very hardcore game. Like, you are going to want to optimize the hell out of your team. You're going to want to try to push into the harder content. And you're going to want to do a lot of simulated universe. It's kind of like the big draw to the game, right? Is Simu. So, what does Star Rail offer that's different than Genshin? Star Rail, its main focal point is purely story and end game. That's it. That's all there is to it. Like, it's all about building your characters up to be able to tackle the end game, be able to tackle Simulate Universe as well as you can, and being able to do all that stuff. Ooh, speed. Um, <laughs> being able to tackle all these things. Meanwhile, Genshin is much more focused on co op and exploration. And there is focus on story, but the story is much more dialogue heavy than it is in Star Rail. With Star Rail, it's much more like a movie. Like, you're kind of just watching it play out. Um, those are kind of like the main differences. And Star and Genshin does have, like, I'm not taking away from Genshin's combat system. People will be like, Genshin has a deep combat system. It does. It's just not really utilized too, too much. It does, like, you do have, uh, you do have Abyss, which Abyss can be very challenging at times. But I don't consider one floor in the entire game to make the entire game challenging. I just, I've always said this and I stand by it. I don't consider floor 12 being difficult, making the game equals the whole game is hard. That's just, that's just not how it is. Whereas in Star Rail, there's a lot of content that's genuinely hard, um, unless you're really like over prepared for it, unless you have like really strong characters that you've been working on for quite a while. That could change things because those characters could just absolutely plow stuff. But for most people, they're probably gonna have relics like I do. They're gonna have, probably have characters like I do that are just, pee pee poo poo characters not very good and they're going to struggle with a lot of the content in the game especially so far a lot of the events have came out that have been pretty challenging so i'm going to base off that and assume that most people do struggle with the game because like i said i know i don't farm relics all that much like i'm doing right now uh but i do know that a lot of people do struggle to get good relics and highly optimized builds so star rail is much more designed for that Star Rail is much more designed for the people who want to do like heavy theory crafting to your team, who want to optimize heavily. That's what Star Rail is really, really pushing towards. And that's why I love the game. It's much more end game focused. Genshin's much more story and social focused. But yeah, I digress. TLDR, TLDW, TL whatever, I'm going to shorten it up here. You shouldn't compare these two games because they're different, they have different target demographics, and it's up to you to decide whether you are the target demographic for either game. Uh, there shouldn't really be a comparison because Genshin wants you to explore a lot, wants you to talk to your friends, hang out, and it wants you to be really invested in the story. Whereas Star Rail, it does have a very cool story experience, but everything happens very, very quickly. Like, it's not nearly as long and drawn out as Genshin. But it more so wants you to focus on building your characters, building your units, getting your units really strong, and having very optimized builds. That way you can tackle the very, very um, difficult end game. Well, it can be very difficult, but you can tackle the difficult end game. Because the end game is the primary focus with Simulator Universe and Abyss and whatever else they add in the future. Anyways, that's the video. I just wanted to talk about this because I've seen it going around. And I don't think it's fair to compare the two games because although stylistically they are the same... They are very different in how they play out and the target player they are trying to reach. Anyways, thank you guys for watching as always. Hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Am I right on this? Am I wrong on this? Or is it Star Rail bad because XY, Genshin bad because XY? Let me know. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.